Welcome, everyone, to the latest edition of the Ultimate Cleveland Guardian Show, part of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Universe. I don't know what's going on with my mic. My mic wants to mess with me now that I'm getting started. Here we go. That's better sound. Uh, we're doing a emergency edition, a special edition. Again, my mic is not happy. Uh, of the Ultimate Cleveland Guardian Show. On today's show, we will talk about the good news. The Guardians are now 7-2 and two following their second straight win over the Twins and their fourth straight win overall by uh, beating the Twins again with one road game to go. But despite that great start, there is bad news, and that's a big part of the reason we're doing the podcast today. That's because the Guardians have lost starting pitcher Shane Bieber for the season. It gets, den- gets announced out of nowhere that he is having Tommy John surgery and he's out for the year. I, 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 I'm sick by it. As much as I'm excited about the start, and I'm trying to stay excited about the start that they're off to, with one more road game to end this trip tomorrow, with the, the home opener and a great vibe in the city of Cleveland on Monday, I'm trying to stay positive despite this devastating injury. We'll talk about it all on this special edition of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Coming up right now. All right, welcome back, everybody. Hope you're having a nice Saturday. I saw some folks at the um, at the card show today. I don't know what's going on with my microphone. I apologize. Usually I put it at a certain level. It stays there. It keeps wanting to change right now. I don't know what's happening, but uh, we'll make do. So it was great seeing everybody at the Greeny Card Show today. Uh, everybody, I woke up in a great mood today. Uh, the the Guardians and uh, off to a great start. As we all know, 6-2. and two, They had the day off yesterday. They come into action today, hoping to continue their great play. heading into the home opener on Monday. And then this morning, as I was getting ready to leave for the Greeny, Greeny Card Show, uh, we we got the news that Shane Bieber was having Tommy John surgery. Zach Meisel broke the news first. My partner, he Zach was unable to join me today, but he will rejoin me for a Tuesday. Usually, we, if you, for those who don't know, the Ultimate Cleveland Guardian show is a new show, p- part of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show family. And we are, we the first two episodes have been live Mondays at three. For this week, we have a special edition here today, Saturday night. And then uh, Zach will rejoin me Tuesday at 10 a.m. We're going to do it not on Monday because it's the home opener, but Zach will rejoin me Tuesday. And I look forward to that. And we'll recap the opening day and we'll get Zach's thoughts on the Shane Bieber situation. But when I saw the news that Shane Bieber was going to have Tommy John surgery, my first reaction was, this can't be true. At first, I thought maybe Zach, it was a fake Zach Meisel on Twitter. So I double-checked it, and then I called Jason, uh, Jason Lloyd, and I said, what do you know? Because I I figured Zach was a little busy. So what do you know? What do we got? Press conference in a couple of minutes. Apparently, he's been pitching with pain through the first two starts. And he's having Tommy John surgery. It's not a fake. What's amazing is that you would have thought that if anybody, if I would have saw a tweet this morning saying Tristan McKenzie was having Tommy John surgery, I honestly would not have been surprised. After he passed up on surgery last year and he uh, looked really poor at his first start, throw, you know, velocity way down from where he was last year. Um, uh, you're holding your breath with with Tristan McKenzie, but Shane Bieber looked phenomenal. His first two starts, he was absolutely great. And so, how could you not feel incredibly confident about Shane Bieber being in great shape? Well, apparently, even though he pitched great in those first two starts, he was apparently pitching which there was the issue's been there since the beginning of the year he was pitching through pain and when he left the game at the end of the sixth inning in his second game against Seattle when he all when he looked mad and we all thought oh he's pissed because he's being pulled out of the game at 83 pitches well the reality we now know is he was pissed because he knew there was something wrong with his elbow he had it checked 
and they found a tear in his UCL, and so he's done for the year. And it's obviously devastating news. Now, I'm going to get back to the bad news because I don't want to spend the whole podcast, even though even though this is the biggest part of the reason why we're talking today, I don't want to spend the whole podcast talking bad news. But I will get back to the Shane Bieber news and what it and what it means and how they replace him. I'm going to be doing this all show. For some reason, my microphone is just not behaving itself. Um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But first, this. Folks, check out all the ultimate shows, right? We do the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show every weekday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and on YouTube and on Fridays from 1230 to 1 on WKYC Channel 3. We also have the Ultimate Cleveland Brown Show with G. Bush, Mondays and Fridays at 5 o'clock. The Ultimate Cleveland Cavs Show with uh, Jason Lloyd and Mikey McNuggets, Tuesdays at 5. And the Ultimate 216 Show with Earl LaPearl, Thursdays at 5. Although Earl uh, sometimes moves the time around, too, like, like we're doing with the Ultimate Cleveland Guardian Show. So check out all those great options from the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show universe. And we are back. So I want to talk about the good news. We started with the bad news with Shane Bieber. Let's get to some good news here. The Guardians played a great game today. Uh, they had to do it. it. was pitching by committee. They didn't have much offense. You know, we've seen this team really have some great offense so far this season. Uh, but uh, not today. They got all the runs they were going to score in the second inning. But let's let's go back to the first inning of this game because after the, the Guardians did nothing, they went one, two, three in the first. The Twins, in the bottom of the first, Carlos Carrasco starts the game, strikes out the leadoff man, then walks Carlos Correa. And then he gives up a triple to Alex Kirilov, who's off to a great start for the Twins. He was banged up a lot last year, one point a top prospect. He gets a triple, Correa scores, they take a one nothing lead. But Carrasco is able to hold Kirilov there and hold the Twins to one run by getting Buxton to ground out and Kepler to strike out. That was a sign of things to come in this game. The Twins would only get one more hit the rest of the day, and then in the top of the second, the Guardians would do all the damage that they were going to do. With two outs and two on, Josh Naylor had gotten hit by a pitch to start the inning, and Will Brennan got a base hit. Two out, two on. David Fry, who's been great. I give him his credit. I didn't like that he was in the lineup on opening day. I didn't like that Bo Naylor was on the bench. But David Fry has done an absolutely outstanding job in giving the opportunity. And he had a 424-foot bomb to left center field to give the Guardians a 3-1 lead. And the Guardians only had seven hits in, that, in the game. And they also only had five hits after the second inning. Joe, Joe Ryan actually pitched very well for them. But that was it. Uh, but the, the story of the game was Carrasco and the bullpen getting at a jam, at a jam, at a jam with a lot of walks and hit by pitches. You know, you look at the Twins and you say, well, they only got two hits. How many opportunities did they have to score? Well, I told you they had a runner on third, one out in the first after they had scored their initial run. They didn't score there. In the third inning with Carrasco on, in the third inning, strikeout, walk, strikeout, walk, strikeout. So they had two on there in the third inning. Uh, that that was it. I mean, Carrasco only made it through three, through a ton of pitches. And these were like 80 pitches through three innings. In the fifth inning, the Twins got a hit by pitch and an error. So they had first and second, nobody out. Then Kate Smith comes in for Nick Sandlin, who had pitched the fourth in the start of the fifth. Smith's been great so far. Uh, he strikes out Julian. And then Carlos Correa hits a fielder's choice um, to the third baseman. Looked like it was a great play by Jose Ramirez. That was a big, big thing in this game. Some great defensive plays. Uh, Andres Jimenez made an unbelievable flip. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. But but uh, they got out of that jam. Then in the sixth inning, first and second, nobody out. This was really – I the, the Guardians looked like they would be in, in trouble this inning. So Buxton is hit by a pitch with Smith still in. He then walks Kepler. Carlos Santana, our old buddy, hits a ground ball up the middle. Uh, Jimenez makes a diving stop, right? 
And then he back does a backhanded flip to Rokio, who has to dive, keep his foot on the base, and he somehow holds the base. When I first watched it, I did not think Ro Rokio kept his foot on the base, but he did. So instead of bases loaded, nobody out, it was first and, uh, first and third, one out. Gaddis at that point comes in for Smith. He then hits Walner with a pitch. So the guard, so the Twins have the bases loaded. So it's a three-one game in the sixth. Bases loaded, one out. Gaddis strikes out Jeffers and strikes out Castro. Uh, in the seventh inning against Scott Barlow, the first two Twins get on base. First and second, nobody out on walks by Barlow. Then he gets Kirilov to hit into a double play, and that's it. They got a Twins got a two-out walk in the eighth. Not much there, but even in the ninth, they try to get something going. They bring the tying run to the plate as Correa gets a two-out single. They didn't get their second hit till two outs in the ninth. But Classe strikes out Kirilov to wrap it up. Classe a good inning, gave up the base hit, but had two strikeouts in the ninth to get the save. So without getting a lot of hits, the Twins threatened a ton of times, but the bullpen combined to do a great job. As I said, Carrasco started the game, went three innings, gave up one run, four base runners, six Ks. Guardians struck out 14 Twins batters in this game in nine innings, two hits. The seven walks were ugly. But only one run and only two hits. Carrasco gave up one hit and Classe in the ninth. That's it. Sandlin, Smith, Gaddis, Barlow, Beatty, and Classe all combined. They, Sandlin got the win from the official score out of the pen. And Classe gets his fourth save already on the season. And the Guardians improved to seven and two. They took three out of four from Oakland to win that series. They took two out of three from Seattle to win that series. And in that series, and, and now they've taken the first two against Minnesota with the final road game before they come home tomorrow. And here's the thing. If you look at the last four games the Guardians have played, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today, they have faced four very, very good pitchers. The first five games, Oakland, no no really good. Although they faced Paul Blackburn, who pitched another good game. He's a decent pitcher in the fourth game, and they lost. But And Emerson Hancock's a young pitcher who pitched the first game of that Mariner series, which they lost also. But uh, – since then, you faced four top-notch pitchers, Castillo, Kirby, uh, Lopez, and Ryan, and the Guardians have beaten them all. Now, they haven't crushed uh, – they didn't crush Ryan today. Yeah, I actually thought he pitched very well. But the one big hit was all that matters. David Fry comes through with the big three-run homer, and the Guardians win it 3-1. to one. So I guess the question is right now, folks, how do you feel? Like, coming into the season – None of us thought, uh, most of us thought the Guardians were not a legitimate contender or or not, or weren't going to win the division. By the way, my, my shirt matches the background here. I got this little Guardians red here. So in the beginning of the season, I picked the Guardians to finish second in the division. I thought they'd win, you know, around 80, 82 games. Uh, they got off to this great start. They've been hitting well. I do think they're in competition to win this division. But then you have this devastating injury to Shane Bieber. So it's hard to figure out where, like, how to feel right now. Because I want to feel great and excited. Part of me is. And part of me is like, oh, this sucks. So what do you do? How do you handle it? Well, I'll give you, I, I'll tell you why you should still be excited, even though there is literally no answer for Shane Bieber. That's coming up after this break. Folks, if you haven't done so already, usually we have good working equipment. I, I've never had a problem. with. I've had this microphone for two years. I've never had a problem. For some reason, the the uh, it keeps wanting to uh, lower my voice output. I don't know if you're hearing a difference as it goes up and down, but I keep having to mess with it. I think I'll just leave it now because hopefully you're hearing me okay. Tell me if you're hearing me okay or if I'm going up and down. Let me bring up the chat here. Uh, it, are you hearing me okay? As it starts to drop, it's perfect. All right, R Ricardo, I'm going to leave it alone. And I'll start reading your chats, and I appreciate everybody that's joined me on this special edition. So, uh, but, but, well, I'm on a break here. So let me tell you, the uh, Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show and all our affiliate shows, the Guardian Show, the Cavs Show, the Brown Show, and the 216 Show, we need your help. May 9th is the second anniversary of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. And we want you to continue to be a part of it. So if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Give us a like for this. 
Give us a like for the, all the other shows. We love you and we appreciate our audience. Thank you for being a member uh, uh, or, or become a member, but at least hit the subscribe button that costs you nothing for the ultimate Cleveland sports show. All right. Uh, let me get to some of the comments. You've been sending me messages. Here we go. Uh, Dimitri says WrestleMania time. I'm not talking about WrestleMania. Sorry. Art Van Campen, freaking nightmare. It is. It is a nightmare that Shane Bieber's hurt. Grady Jones, good win, bad loss. Eric Spicer, why can't we have nice things? Uh, Nathan, Adam, the Shane Bieber news made me divorce my wife, and I lost custody of the kids. I drove the car into the lake. What would we do without Shane Bieber? Seems a little extreme. Mark, unbelievable. Uh, Steven, I sweat every year. I start to believe more in the Cleveland curse. Uh, only in Cleveland injuries ruin sports from Oren. Uh, every Cleveland team injury problems. Facts from Oren. Uh, David, good morning, Bull from Melbourne. Wow. David Evan Smith. Hello, David. Good morning in Melbourne, Australia. Just heard about Shane and the Tommy John surgery. I'm shattered. Yeah. Injuries, unfortunately, happen. The youngins have to step up, and that's from Trey. And let me go with that now, and then I'll read some more messages. The Guardians have no answer for Shane Bieber. It's as simple as that. They are going to have to overcome an injury, a, a, a team that already had its issues d due to injury in the starting rotation with Gavin Williams, although hopefully be back before the end of the month. That's dealing with some serious injuries in the bullpen, fortunately not to their best reliever. They still have their closer, Emmanuel Class A, and a, and a lineup that is limited. Let's say that. Although it hasn't really been this so far. So far, so good. The lineup's been very good. But it's limited. We know this. We're, we're, we keep it real, right? To replace Corey Kluber, the Guardians have been a pitching factory. They've always had young guys ready to go. This year, they do not. That's the bottom line. The guys they had ready to go, um, the guys they had ready to go were guys they brought in last year. Um, Gavin Williams, Logan Allen, Tanner Bybee. They're already here. So who's next in the pipeline? Well, there's really nobody. The Guardians, if you look at their top prospects, right? Daniel Espino is their top, top pitching prospect. That's still in the minors. He's hurt. He's been hurt for years. He's going to miss another full season. Their next best pitching prospect is a kid named Alex Clemmy, who's pitching an A ball. He's nowhere close to being able to ready pitch to pitch in the big leagues. Joey Cantillo is a guy we've seen a little bit of. He's been in Triple A. He's probably ready to pitch in the big leagues, except he can't because he's hurt, hamstring injury. He's out for two months. The rest of their top pitching, their pitching prospects, if you look at their minor league list, are all guys who are A ball guys and are nowhere close. The guys the Guardians have pitching in Columbus are journeymen or non prospects. So there's no answer. Maybe the, the Guardians will get lucky and Xavion Curry uh, or Ben Lively or. I mean, I don't even know who else. Maybe they bring Kate Smith out of the pen. Maybe they bring Hunter Gaddis out of the pen, although the way Hunter Gaddis is pitched, I think I'd leave him where he is. He's found a nice home in that bullpen. I don't know who they're going to pick, but it's it's someone that is as big a possible drop-off as he can get. There is no high upside prospect to replace Shane Bieber. That's just the facts. So what's going to have to happen is, because this is baseball, and you never know, is that the Guardians are going to have to overcome about as big a loss as any team can have. You are losing your best pitcher and have no decent replacement. Uh, for now, they'll move Logan Allen up, and he'll pitch the home opener on Monday. They'll move Tanner Bybee up. He'll pitch the second home game against the White Sox on Tuesday. No short rest because they had the off day yesterday, so everybody be going on normal rest. But on Wednesday the third game of that White Sox series, they're going to need to have either a, a bullpen game, which they kind of did today with Carrasco only going three innings, which puts the bullpen in a bind to begin with, or they're going to have to call somebody up. Now, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't, when you look, I think Xavion Curry has pitched one game 
uh, in the minors. He's had one rehab start. So he might be the answer. Uh, and let me see. Hmm. Uh, I think that uh, stats, individual stats. Here we go. I believe that. Uh, here we go. I don't have to believe anything. So they've had Curry has made one appearance. He pitched two and two thirds innings. Didn't give up any runs, had seven strikeouts. He's building up. I don't know how many innings he could go. The other guys that have made starts down in Columbus, Will Dion, Connor Gillespie, and Hunter Stanley. And Ben Lively has had one rehab start, too. He pitched three innings. So I would assume, uh, bec- you know, that although I don't hmm, – both uh, Curry and Lively were on the injured list to start the season. So I'm not sure if it's been 15 days. I don't know. My math is not very great here off the top of my head. But uh, they both went on the 15-day IL on, what was it, March? Well, it's been, let's see. This is day nine of the season, Saturday. No, it's day 10. They could backdate it up to two days, I think 12, 13. Yes, I think, I believe both Curry and Lively would be eligible to come off the IR by either Tuesday or Wednesday. The IL, I should say. So I would assume that they'll call up either Curry or Lively to make the start. Uh, Lively made some starts for Cincinnati last year. They signed him for to, for $1 million. Uh, Curry pitched a little, as we know, in the big leagues for the Guardians last year. I would lean towards Lively, but I guess it, we'll see who they think is you know, ba- bounce back better. They were both, they didn't have injuries. They were both sick. There was a virus going around in, in Arizona and both Curry and Lively weren't able to throw much. So they're building up. Whichever one they call up, you're not going to get that many pitches out of either of those guys. You're probably looking at, if you're lucky, you know, maybe five innings. I mean, that would be, if either one of them gives you five innings, that would be a huge win. We'll see if they can get it done. But baseball is a crazy game. And the Guardians are playing well. Maybe they end up at some point. Maybe Ben Lively does just enough. And remember, when they get Gavin Williams back, then they could take either Carrasco or whoever they add to the rotation, whether it's Lively or Curry, out. And then, in theory, you'd still have four strong spots. Now, we don't know that Tristan McKenzie's strong. Honestly, I'm nervous about him. He's going to pitch tomorrow. So I'm going to have my eyes on that game tomorrow to see how Tristan McKenzie looks because he did not look good in that uh, in that first start against the um, against the Mariners. Hopefully he will look better when he gets on the mound tomorrow. So while, yes, there's no way around it, it absolutely sucks that Shane Bieber has to have Tommy John surgery and that he's out for the year. If I look for a silver lining, Maybe they end up re-signing Shane Bieber. Um, if you want more on that, I'll give you a little on that. But I know uh, my co-host for the Ultimate Cleveland Guardian show, Zach, show, Zach Meisel, wrote a column today in The Athletic about the possibilities for Shane Bieber. Uh, I was talking about this earlier today. You know, last year, uh, um, Brandon Woodruff actually had Tommy John surgery more recently than than B- or he Bieber would be able to come will miss some of next year, whereas Woodruff's going to miss all of this year. But he's he just signed a two year deal with the Brewers. He's been a Brewers whole career. He's been a very good pitcher, not quite as good as Bieber, but not far off. And he signed a two year. He, he thought he was going to get a big contract in free agency this year. He had Tommy John surgery. He's out for this year and uh, he'll be back at the start of next season. And so he signed a two year deal with the Brewers. Maybe the only silver lining, and I wish we didn't have to talk about this, is that I guess it's possible the Guardians could sign Shane Bieber now. We'll see. I mean, I don't know if they'll be interested. Uh, he's, I think he's about to turn 29. He's missed significant time now. It'll be three or four seasons. So who knows where their mind's at. But it is possible they can get Bieber. If you get him for a two-year deal, you'd have him for a year and a half because he's up at the end of this year. So if you sign him for a two-year deal at the end of this year, two-year extension, you get him for way less money. He'll probably miss at least a month or two next year. Let's say he comes back 
in June next year. So you'd have him for the rest of next year and a full year after that. Potentially. Potentially. I will see if the but this is this is the only way that there was any chance Bieber was going to resign. Again, I would totally give that up for him to be healthy, pitching great, and helping the Guardians to get to the playoffs. But I just wanted to give you all angles of this. Eric Evans said Bauer needs to be back, in my opinion. I've said it before, as much as I despise Trevor Bauer, I would leave my personal stuff out of it. I would sign him if I were a major league team, but the Guardian, but nobody is interested. If Trevor Bauer was going to get a job, it would have happened. I can't imagine the Guardians want to go down that road. Part of this is the off the field stuff. Part of it is he burned a lot of bridges within the league. Uh, Robert says ownership was hoping to get a good haul for him at the trade deadline. Now that's out the door. Yes, it is. Bull, give me some Zach. Bull, give me some optimism. I need it. I love this baseball team. I, I hope I gave it to you. you. You sent that message to me about 18 minutes ago. I hope I have. I love the way this team is playing. They're hitting the ball very well. They, you know, they could have been down in the dumps after the Bieber news could have just destroyed them today, and they didn't. Everybody contributed. Fry's Homer, the pitching staff as a, as, a, as a group, the bullpen, they all did a great job holding a really good Twins team to one run. So the season's not over. It's devastating. It's a big loss. They're less likely to make the playoffs without Shane Bieber. There's no way around it. But, it, and they're going to be asking a ton for their young pitchers. McKenzie, Williams, Bybee, Allen, all four have to be really good. If those four guys pitch up to their capabilities, the Guardians could still win a lot of games this year, especially with the way they're hitting. Obviously, that's going to need to keep up. Twinkies are garbage. I don't think they're garbage. They're not playing well right now, but I don't think they're garbage. They're not great, but they're not garbage. They're a pretty good team. Uh, Robert, I don't think Carrasco is the answer. Maybe uh, maybe Lively, Beatty, or Curry. Yeah, I don't think any of them are the answer, but you're going to have to use two of those guys, including Carrasco, for a while. Ricardo, appreciate you, Bull. I appreciate you, Ricardo. Uh, Brad, quit, uh, Bull, quit, quit playing with the mic. You sound fine. It's driving me crazy. It was driving me crazy, too. I was annoyed at myself, and so I stopped doing it. Uh, Michael, Classe has looked much better, though the command on the slider scares me. He hangs things a lot. He does. I don't think he's looked as sharp. He really didn't look as sharp last year all the time, and he hasn't so far this year, but he's still really good and gets the job done. Oren, vote is better than Francona. That's stupid. That, that's stupid. Uh, let's see. Uh, Michael, I feel fine after seeing Detroit lose. Minnesota's a mess. Kansas City isn't ready. I mean, that's the hope, right? Detroit is off to a good start. They did lose today. Minnesota's not playing well. Kansas City's okay. Nobody in this team is that good. No, nobody in this division is that good that the Guardians should be totally out of it. And now we don't now at least we don't have to ask the question all year. Will Shane Bieber be traded? Could they sign a new pitcher, Ricardo? I mean, Trevor Bauer's out there. There's really nobody else in free agency that could could help you. They could make a trade. Uh, and they should make a trade, but I don't know if they're gonna do that. I, I could see them making a trade for a cheap player, but not a legitimate starter to that could make a big difference. Uh, they, everybody's saying it's all good with the mic. Thank you. I, I'll stop messing with it. Eric Bull, the Bieber's injuries open the door for us to maybe give him a cheaper short-term extension. I just talked about that. I think it does. Uh, Joseph, I heard this and came to you immediately. I knew you'd be on. I'm here for you, baby. I, I, this sucks. I'm bummed. I know everybody's bummed. I'm bummed. I didn't want this to happen, but I'm not giving up on this team, and I'm still excited about the way they're playing. Let's get this eighth win tomorrow and come home and beat the crap out of those awful White Sox. Um, they're not this. There's no great answer. Ty and others who are asking me, I gave you some of the minor league options. Um, there's no great answer. Gunner, I had this team winning 75 without Shane at 65. I don't believe that. I had him winning 83 without Shane. I'll probably knock it to 78. But I hope they over. I hope they do better than that. There are listen. If the rest of the pitchers pitch great, they still got a shot. The division's weak. You could win this division with 83 games. I think it's possible. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, can't. Uh, uh, let's see. Gunner, this chat room is filled with a bunch of Little League coaches. What's wrong with the Little League coach? I'm a Little League coach. Orin Cookie is cooked. Uh, let's see. Robert thinks they'll be rained out tomorrow. If that happens, yeah, they'd probably push McKenzie, and then you wouldn't need another starter to the following weekend. Will Dion is – he's not a top prospect, Will Dion. It's not one of their better prospects. 
And he got he's gotten clobbered. His first two starts in Columbus, he's pitched eight and a third, has 13 strikeouts. That's nice, but 10 hits and and the six walks in eight and a third. 12 runs allowed, two homers, eight earned runs. He's been awful so far. I don't know I'm feeling good about him right now. Uh, let's see. Baltimore Orioles are going to win the, the World Series. Uh, listen, we got a lot of time. We got a lot of time to figure that out. Need a third base coach. Yeah, that was terrible. What inning was that? Now, I meant to write that down, but at the time, I wasn't sure I was going to do the show tonight. I got to go back and look at the box score. What in it? We got to look at the box because that was just awful. It was early in the game. Let me see what in. Let me remind myself what inning that was. Uh, yes, the fifth inning. So if you weren't watching the game, uh, Brian Rocchio doubled with one out in the fifth. The Guardians were, and it didn't matter in the end. But Rocchio's on second with two outs. Andres Jimenez, it's a, a ground ball single to right. Line drive, but it wasn't like a bullet. And Brian Rocchio's got great speed, and they held him up at third. Thankfully, that did not cost him a run. That was a terrible job by the Guardians' new third base coach, I, whose name is escaping me. Rocchio, they should have sent Rocchio. He, it's not like, at first I was like, did he get a bad jump? Did he not read it right? No, he got a great jump. He was tearing around third. 95% he would have scored. You got to send him with two outs. I know Jose Ramirez is coming up, uh, but you got to send him in that situation. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Nicholas, I know it's early, but we have the best record in baseball. Well, it is It is early. Uh, I don't think they'd have the re best record in baseball. The Brewers technically are five and one, have a better record. And then the Guardians at seven and two. Winning percentage, they have the second, be second best record. But yeah, they're off to an awesome start. Um, Odor, yeah, as the third base coach, that was, that was, um, um, that was not good. Uh, yeah, Dion not on any of their top prospect list, Pete. Maybe we'll see. I know he's pitched well, but he hasn't pitched well so far this year. All right. Thanks to everybody for joining me. Sorry it was for a crappy reason, but I hope we had some cheered you up and made you feel a little better uh, about the Guardians getting to seven and two. Hopefully we'll see if they play tomorrow. Rain in the forecast in Minnesota. Home opener on Monday. The, I'll be back on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show on Monday. I'll be back with another podcast from Bet Rivers on Monday. Uh, go back and watch this if you're just joining us now. Check out my podcast uh, for Bet Rivers. Make sure you subscribe to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Make sure you subscribe to the, the Bullpen with Adam the Bull, my podcast from Bet Rivers. And we'll be back with another live edition uh, 10 a.m. on Tuesday of the Ultimate Cleveland Guardian Show as Zach joins me. Until then, we'll see you next time, everybody. Love you all. Have a great weekend. See ya.